Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. How are you all doing? Today, I'm gonna to put the crank back in the block. It was a bit of a half-assed video on the uh, measurements for my piston and my bores. Well, it was half-assed and it wasn't. I mean, I've got a bit of an advantage that I've got the part number for my piston, so I know I can get a ring pack from my part number. But I'm gonna go through the process of measuring these bores more thoroughly than just with my little T-spring out bore measurer. I have a friend who has one of the dial indicator gauge rockers, okay, rocker measurements, and he's got some uh, micrometers. I'm getting them off him uh, this weekend, and I'm gonna go through the process of measuring the piston um, diameter at the skirt with a micrometer, so getting it more accurate with a micrometer, then setting up the dial indicator bore measurer to the micrometer me measurement and just checking my bores more thoroughly so I can make absolutely sure that the rings that I'm going to purchase are going to be what is required and also make sure from those measurements that I get that the actual piston to cylinder clearance is within spec. So I'm just doing a quick wipe over here to make sure that everything is nice and clean. Of course, the whole block has been cleaned. It's all nice and dry and dust free, but putting the crank in, I've just cleaned the crank and I wanna make sure everything is clean as. Okay, now I'm going to apply some engine assembly lube to um, the shells here in the block before I place the crank in. Now, it's just, just important to note, I never lubricate the underside of my shells. I put them in dry into the block, in case anyone was wondering. I think I've seen people that lubricate the other side. I don't think that's a good idea because <laughs> you want them to not be spinning. You don't want to be spinning any of your caps. And I think that could be a recipe for spinning your caps. Just be not over the top with this stuff, but generous. And this is the thrust shell here. So I'll make sure I get some of this on the sides of the cap as well, of course. Both faces. Really careful here to only get the engine assembly lube on the caps at the back here. I don't want anything going anywhere near where the seal is going to go in. And I need to actually place the seal in the block. This is a two piece seal in my block, not a rope seal. So it's a Felpro two piece. Let's make sure we've got plenty of lube. In the face of the thrust. Make sure that's all happy. Good. I'm going to put my uh, bottom half of the seal in the block here. Now it's important to note, and I think most people know this. When you place these seals, you just have to make sure that your, your little lip here, the little groove, is facing in ways. But before I do place this in, I've just got a little bit of good old engine mineral oil, the oil that's going to be used in the engine. And I'm just going to just slightly pre-lube the seal, so it's not completely dry when the crank sits on it. And I don't install this offset like some folks do. I set it so then it's exactly 
sitting as it needs to sit halfway, halfway. These sit proud, okay? They do sit proud. Um, and when the other cap goes on and the other half of the seal sits on this, it, it crushes. They crush together and there's no way there's oil getting past that spot, in my opinion. I do not bother offsetting it. I think it's a waste of time. I just set it uh, flush. I just make sure that the lip of the seal is facing in towards the internal part of the engine. Okay, I'm going to place the crank in here now. Now, this crank is one mother of a crank. It's quite heavy. So hopefully I won't drop this because I'm wearing my Japanese safety boots and they don't normally do very well if you drop heavy items. Uh, Uh, on your feet. Okay, just give that a little, a little spin. That's nice. Sitting in there nice, no resistance. You wouldn't think there would be, but just want to make sure that that is nice and smooth. Okay. Okay, so we'll add our caps now. Starting with the uh, Cap number one. Now, when we install our caps, we make sure that the tang on our shells, okay, lines up with the tang in the block. So then they're orientated in the correct way. And I'm just gonna put some engine assembly oil on this cap as well. Make sure plenty of that and we make sure we, we align this tang to tang and it is really important that you relocate your caps as they are numbered now I'm only going to uh, be snugging these I'm not going to be talking them but before I put my um, cap bolt in I just give them a light just really light not dripping wet just a light uh, coat of WD-40. And I'll just, for now, finger tight these. And then I'll make sure that everything is as it should be here for each cap. This isn't quite sitting in, there it is. You really just gotta make sure that when you place the caps that they're located in the machined area and that they're not skewed and I just literally with my hands right at the top of the uh, driver here I just snug them and that's it all right and I'll just roll this make sure it feels nice and smooth there's no abnormalities okay no problems Second cap. This stuff is like honey. It's uh, engine assembly lube. That's what you want. You want it sticking to the surfaces. Again, I'm gonna make sure that I'm lining up tang to tang on the cap. And it's pretty easy with these uh, Clevo caps because they're numbered and the numbers have got to you know, sit the right way, basically, anyway. Light spray of WD-40. Just, just a little hand tighten. All good. Okay, our thrust. Cap is next. This one again, like the one in the block, going to make sure we have some lube on the face, on the thrust face of these. This one as well. Again, tang to tang. Now, 
thrust is obviously a little bit different to all of the other caps. Now, with the crank, obviously, you know, when the crank goes in and we put our caps on, it's aligned this way. It can't go anywhere this way, but it can move, obviously, forward and back. So we need to do a little procedure um, at the end here before this is tightened down to make sure the crank is seated so then this is orientated in the position right in the middle where it needs to be for this to be effective as a thrust cap. And we'll go through that. Fairly standard procedure. Every man and his dog on YouTube uh, shows how to do that, but you, you, you do need to do it. Otherwise, it will be a cock up. And just very gently. Tighten those down. Give it a rotate. Lovely. Okay. Cap number four. Let's double check here that we're going tang to tang. Yes, we are. Make sure it's located in its machined slots. Tiny little bit of WD. Now I made sure, obviously, when the when the when the block was washed that all of the threaded holes that all our bolts go in were ultra clean, ultra dry, they were pressure washed. Okay, Just nip those up. Let's give it a rotate, make sure there's nothing binding or being silly. Okay, last cap. Right, so the last cap which incorporates our rear seal. Again, with the seal, I will uh, add some pre-lube, engine oil. Don't have to go crazy with this, just a little bit. Just to, um, just to lubricate that seal a little bit. So, the journal, okay, so it doesn't damage it, okay. You know, I've just got to orientate this in the correct way. Place that in, making sure, just double checking that the lip, now that I've put the oil on it, I'm having a little bit of a hard time working out which that the lip is facing in the right orientation. It is, this goes in like this. So our lip goes in like this. And it's better to definitely double, triple check those sorts of things, otherwise, <laughs> otherwise you're gonna have a leaking rear end, which is bloody annoying. Okay, Get some uh, engine assembly lube on the cap. Okay, now there's one more step that I do uh, on this. Because I've had uh, a rear leaking main before, I'm a little bit paranoid when it comes to the rear main seals. So what I do, okay, is I get some of this liquid gasket, okay, it's an aviation liquid gasket, all right, and I just, I haven't used this for a while, so, <laughs> yep, and it's like a, it's almost like a liquid tar, this stuff, and I'll run a little bit right along the back edge of the machine surface where the seal sits up, back to uh, where the groove, where it's been machined in, uh, above where the oil pan rail section is here, just from the seal across to the edges. I don't flood it, I just put a little bit in. As some additional insurance. 
probably completely unnecessary, but you know, I just do it. If you haven't worked out that I'm um, Captain Paranoid by now, well, you're a bit slow. Okay. stuff is super sticky. If it gets on your uh, if it gets on your fingers, good luck getting it off. Okay, now this has to go this way, tang to tang. And you can feel the seals contacting each other so there is no way in uh, anybody's universe that those seals orientated flush are, are going to be an issue right. I, I just find that doing everything by hand like this Okay, rather than you know using a, a motorized driver or anything like that, you'd be crazy doing that when you're first putting all this back together. You want to feel and make sure there's no, nothing abnormal about any of your bolts when they're going in. They screw in easily. They don't have any junk in them. And I can see when I nip these up, right, I can see that liquid gasket former squeeze out. Okay, so. too tight at the moment we're not talking anything to spec until a lot later we've got to get our rods well basically talk the rods and the caps at the same time okay so then basically it's just all done together okay that is lovely lovely all right so now I need to seat the crank with the thrust and we need to make sure we've got our thrust in the center this way so then we don't end up with crank walk the way that I'm going to do that is with my five pounder and people are going oh, what the hell is he doing and I can't blame you for saying that okay so I'm going to come to the front of my crank here I'm not going to do it with my bolt in because you can tend to uh, uh, warp the threads in your bolt doing this now we don't have to belt that absolute living daylights out of this we're just basically tapping it all the way back okay and then we need to have an area here that we can hit it this way as well I'm gonna do it one more time for good measure okay okay and we should have a seated crank now that that uh, step has been done, I'm going to now just tighten down my thrust bearing here to be snug, like not over tight. Snug so it doesn't go anywhere. Obviously, I've got to get my torque wrench on these and get these all torqued to their spec. I'll just nip everything. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, well, I'm just gonna leave it there with the video today. Guys, thank you for tuning in. You guys stay safe, stay healthy, and take it easy out there.